biggest story in college football is Nick Saban not coaching against Georgia. And he went on his coach's show on Thursday night and raised an issue that we talked about on the Thursday program of the show, which is why does the rule that you have to be located in the stadium in order to be a part of the game still exist in 2020? In other words, I can understand back in the day why there might have been apprehension or nervousness about the idea of someone outside of the stadium being involved in a coaching staff. But what is the risk of Nick Saban being involved in making decisions during the game remotely? And he specifically referenced that he's being paid $9 million a year, basically. He's the highest paid coach in all of football. And if Steve Sarkeesian makes a decision that he wouldn't have made on the sideline, then Sark is going to get criticized. Why wouldn't it make sense if it's fourth and one late in the game for Nick Saban to be able to be on a headset and make a decision like that? It, 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 I don't understand. I think this is something that really is an example of an outdated rule that doesn't really convey a competitive advantage. Even the most diehard Georgia fan out there, I think would probably acknowledge that it makes sense for Nick Saban to be able to make the strategic decisions for his team, just like it would make sense for Kirby Smart to be able to do the same thing if he weren't, for some reason, able to be physically present in the stadium because of COVID, especially because Saban says he's completely asymptomatic. Alabama released a statement from his doctor saying that he's completely asymptomatic. There literally is no health-related reason why Saban shouldn't be able to be involved in decision-making in this game. So that, to me, is by far the biggest story coming out of the uh, as we head into tomorrow's games in college football. Biggest game by far, Georgia on the road against Alabama. The other big stories, honestly, are as much about the games that are not being played and are being postponed because Florida and LSU probably would have been the second biggest game of the day, and it's not actually going to be taking place. So uh, as you look forward... That, to me, seems like an issue that could be debated, discussed, and analyzed inside of college football and even the NFL in particular. Because imagine if come February, let's say Bill Belichick tests positive for COVID but is asymptomatic. Does it make sense that Bill Belichick wouldn't be able to coach from the sideline, of, you know, outside of the sideline, but somewhere where he's on his own, but where he could have access to his team via headset. I, I, I think most of you out there would say, no, I'd want the head coach to be able to be involved in making the decisions that a head coach would typically make. I don't want an interim to suddenly have to show up and coach a massive game. And by the way, this could happen in the college football playoffs. This could certainly happen in the NFL playoffs. It might happen that a guy has to miss a couple of games. I just don't think it makes a lot of logical sense going forward. The other biggest story that I would say is being brought to bear in the NFL, outside of Le'Veon Bell deciding to sign with the Chiefs, it'll be intriguing to see how well he fits in. I think that's probably a good addition because the Chiefs seem to have things rolling on the offensive side, takes a little bit of the snaps away from Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, allows both of those running backs to probably be pretty fresh, also protects the Chiefs in the event that there are COVID issues, that emerge during the course of the season that continue to sap some of the strength of a team. I can see that making a lot of sense. That obviously news after the Jets released Le'Veon Bell. But to me, and by the way, Le'Veon Bell gets rewarded. He gets shipped away from an awful team into a not just contending team, but the Super Bowl favorite if you look at the odds. But to me, the biggest game of the weekend in the NFL is Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers hosting Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. First of all, I don't know if we're going to be able to see these guys play against each other ever again. Brady's 43. Maybe he's going to play a couple more years. Aaron Rodgers certainly looks like all of a sudden he's gotten the fountain of youth. The moment they drafted Bryce Love, it was like he took it, Jordan Love, sorry, it was like it took him to a totally different level in terms of his performance. He's been lights out. And Tom Brady has been 
pretty good. It seemed like they were starting to put together everything with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, even though there's been a lot of injuries at his offensive playmaking position. And then they just fell apart against the Bears. Fell apart beyond measure against the Bears. And so this is a must-win game to me for the Bucs. And if they lose this one and fall to 3-3, three and three, I know you can say, hey, Tom Brady historically is a slow starter. Everything's going to be fine. I'm not buying in with that. I think this is a circle the wagons, must-win game for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. For the Green Bay Packers, it's a gravy game. If they are fortunate enough to be able to win it, then they're going to be ecstatic to still be undefeated and continuing to put themselves keeping pace with the Seahawks. If they lose, I don't think there's any reason to panic. You still look back at the season so far and say, Aaron Rodgers has looked phenomenal. He and Russell Wilson have been the best quarterback so far this year. But this, to me, is a must-win game for Brady and the Bucs. I want to see how this offense looks. I think there's going to be a lot of points scored, and I want to know if Brady and the Bucs can bounce back from a awful second half, like the last, basically, what would you say, the last 35 minutes of that game against the Bears was pretty awful. The Bucs came out and dominated. They were up 13 nothing in Thursday night football, which seems a long time ago now. And since then, they kind of fell apart. 